the rest of the story. Bill Morehouse and Joe Foxhood had bought, redecorated, and sold houses before. But there was something about that grand old Victorian in Three Oaks, Michigan, that invited them to stay. The partners were ideally suited to their partnership. Bill was a furniture designer. Joe was in the hardware business. Both dealt in antiques. And when that spacious old house came on the market in 1992, the price was just too tempting to resist. Bill and Joe bought it, considered how best to remodel it. And Joe, looking around, said, I'm tired of that tumble-down farmhouse of mine. And Bill added that he wouldn't mind to change himself. So Bill and Joe together moved in never imagining the adventure that was about to begin one week later. It was one of the biggest rainstorms any Michigander could remember. When it struck Three Oaks, the Victorian 83-year-old roof gave way. Now, all of a sudden, Bill and Joe were frantically phoning roofers, bailing out, mopping up. The roofing bill was staggering. So high that there was a bit of hand-wringing as to how it would be paid. Meanwhile, Bill and Joe started removing damp, damaged lath and plaster from ceilings and walls, and that's when they discovered them, many thousands of them hiding in the walls. Obviously, Bill and Joe had come up short in researching the house's history. So it was back to the town's hall of records and to the library, and yes, now it all made sense, considering the owner of the house through the era of the Great Depression. What do you suppose they're worth, Bill asked Joe, referring to the long secret bounty they had unveiled. And Joe answered that he couldn't even guess. So Bill started calling experts and dealers all over the country. Don't tell anyone about this, each advised, and just as promptly each of them boarded the next plane to Three Oaks. The connoisseurs were flabbergasted. Did Bill and Joe have any idea what they had uncovered, they were asked? Why, just one of those items authorities appraised at $15,000 or more considered in its entirety the discovery represented a fortune in artwork. For the house's owner, all through the 30s, was longtime manager of the local movie theater. And for many years, he had saved theater posters and window cards promoting the movies that he had shown. So when it came time for him to refurbish his house, he brought home all of those many thousands of poster cards, most many times duplicate, for practical use as insulation. He used them for insulation. For once upon a house behind paint and paper in perpetual darkness, there lived untouched yesterday. The likenesses of Davis and Dietrich and Bill Fields and Mae West and hundreds more whose aggregate, some say, may be worth millions someday. For even still, folks in and about Three Oaks like to tantalize visiting strangers with the remarkably true tale of how two local fellows found buried treasure. And, of course, that is so. And, of course, now you know the rest of the story.